Yes, sir. 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 We will call that tonight. We're going to call it the Solidarity Platform. A pleasant good evening to everyone present. It is indeed something that has that is so tragic that has happened to our Kalinago sister. We have all been affected in one way or the other. Knowing the person that Velma was, she was a brilliant, motivated, very determined, loving, and kind person. She was one who could inspire us. She is one who would reach out even though she had a busy schedule. And everywhere you would have met her, she would have spread that love. She would have shown that her people are really important to her. And I remember even when we reconnected was when my brother fell ill at the hospital. Well, he, was, he fell ill and he went to the hospital. And she was one of the student doctors who took the most and best care of him. And as a friend, as a relative, she made time for her people. We had so many plans, as I think Maureen may have mentioned in one of her speeches on Facebook. We had plans, the three of us, to do a lot. In this community. It is just sad how um, things can be cut short and not how we expect it to be. But in spite of it, we have to move forward and we have to uni unify and collaborate and join our voices together. This is an opportunity that we can use this example as a reason for us to stop fighting and stop bringing each other down, especially as women. Let us come together and see how we can make things happen for the benefit of ourselves, for the benefit of, of our community, for the benefit of our children, and to women who are suffering in silence and probably putting out an outward appearance so people don't know. This is your time to come out. If you are a victim, it is not your fault. And don't blame, don't allow people to blame you or bring you down. But if you have somebody that you can confide in, speak to that person. Step out, step out. Be a voice, let your voice be heard. Go out there and something that I always say, put your best foot forward, become the best version of yourself and make a difference. You never know who you might be ins inspiring. And always seek to be a helping hand to somebody else. Be a shoulder for somebody else to lean on. For somebody else to cry on. So to all our Kalinago people, we are all still mourning the loss of our dear sister. Because it was really a gruesome way to die. And to the family... I just, the close family, I want to let you know that I am here. If you need somebody to talk to, I am here. And anybody else, I'm sure that you have been affected in one way or another. Please reach out. Don't hesitate to reach out to anybody that you know is suffering, to the family members. Because at the end of the day, we are still one people. Thank you. A conversation with Velma. We would always end up laughing, sharing a happy moment. That was the kind of person she was. She was a light because she was one of those women in Sineku that set the example for others to follow. 
she pursued a career in medicine and as we know medicine is very expensive especially for a Kalinago person but she took it one year at a time and she was almost done when this goal was stolen from her and I say it was stolen because she died innocently she didn't deserve to die that way but she did and today as a Kalinago person I also want to encourage us to realize that Velma just didn't die as a hopeless person she was one who stood up for violence against women and violence against children child abuse in the community she was one of those who spoke out against these issues and that I believe is indeed a light to us secondly given the circumstances around Velma's death we know that she stood up fighting she wasn't one who was cowering in fear but she was like hey if you don't leave it's time that you have to leave so i can say that she died fighting and standing up for her rights and that is what we as indigenous people need to continue to do we have to know our rights and we have to stand up for it we cannot allow people to bully us we cannot allow people to think less of us because we are the ones who know our own values we know what we go through we know what we want and therefore we need to embrace those rights and so for the past few years i've been encouraging our people to familiarize ourselves with the rights of the indigenous people that the United Nations put forward. We have to know those rights and stand up for it. So that when we hear issues such as our women being beaten, we wouldn't be silent about it. And it's really heartbreaking when the people that we would expect to stand up and speak out for us are those that are silent to the issues that hurt us the most. And therefore tonight, I also call on the leaders, those of you who were elected into positions to do what you should to protect your people. We have been promised a safe house for years. I'm in my 30s and I know that there were people who were beaten years ago and are still being beaten today. We need a safe house for our women. We need an avenue where our women can go to to share their concerns their fears and speak to the issues that affect them where is the consular where is the health care in the territory two of our health centers are down yes, what are we saying yes, yes. so Velma's death tonight should be a reminder that we need to stand up for our rights we need to focus on our goals and go for it. Just as Velma was working hard to go for her goals, we need to pursue the goals of ensuring that healthcare in the territory is at its best because that's what she would want. That's why she pursued a career in medicine to care for those around her. A field where you would give yourself selflessly and we need better health care in the territory. And if we want to honor Velma, I believe that is one of the ways and that, that is one of the things that we can do. Improve the health care service in the territory. Provide services for our women to get the care, the counseling, the attention that they need. Yes, of Enough of talking for now and more of actions. We need to get things done to protect our women. Yes, yes. And so, as we go forward into the future, I just want to encourage us as we remember Velma, not as a loser, but as someone who stood up for women's rights and for violence against children. And that we should all do our best to ensure that whatever we do, we honor and respect children and we honor and respect women. 
I thank you. to everybody. I um, I really don't want to talk about Vail, you know. I don't want to talk about Vail. Honestly, I don't want to talk about Vail. But what I want to say, I um, definitely support a lot of the points that uh, Miss Sanford just bring in right now. And um, I want to say that life is short. And when I came in here this afternoon, I went to see um, the ex-chief or the past chief, that is Mr. Williams. He was, the first thing that he was saying, Kalinago people doesn't have love. You know I'm saying? Kalinago people doesn't have love because people are not showing up to give the support or the solidarity. And it is true. We as a people, as a tribe, as a nation, we have gone away far from God. Jehovah God is the first. And he is the one that we have to put first in our life. And what happened to my sister is truly a wake-up call for the Kalinago people and for Dominica. Because it happened not to my sister alone, but... To, to the other young lady um, that happened to. So it happened, it, it is a wake up call for Dominica and for the Kalinago people. Honestly, I am impressed seeing the amount of people that is there. There could be more people, but I am truly impressed. And if, if that happened, and this is the beginning of a fight for the people, for the tribe, for a nation. Because we as a people have been suffering a lot. Really suffering. Physically, mentally, emotionally. We, our people have been um, suffering. Yes, politically we have been suffering. Manipulated. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we have really been down to the lowest degree. And we, as a people, we have to look at ourselves truly and see what is it that we want. Sister Bell knew what she wanted. Trust me, she knew what she wanted. And she put on a fight in her last legal life. And a lot of the politicians who are there, they know Sister Bell because... Sister Bell is one of them that was really knocking at the door of the politicians and them. I want the opportunity. Give me some money. Give me a push. Push me. I want to go. Give me that push. And for some reason, for some reason, she, her, her voice had not been heard. And there are a lot of people today who are crying and knocking at the door of the politicians and calling to them calling to the power rep, calling to the prime minister, whoever it is, and they call in because they want that push. They want that opportunity. They want that to be, you know, that they can pursue their career. That they can make a life. Let me tell you, honestly, they'll die as a champion. But you know what? You know who lost? Really? It's the Kalinago people who lost. We. We lost a doctor. Maybe the, the first woman doctor? 
history. You know what I'm saying? But history make another way. So she will go down in history as someone that was... I did not want to say too much of how she went. But I want to encourage us tonight, people of the Kalinago territory. Let us respect one another. If you respect me and I respect you, you will love me. I will love you. Respect your mother. Respect your sister. As a man, it has plenty of, we have a lot of problems in Kalinago territory, you know. It have a lot of young fellas. They live in their parent home. And they are disrespectful to their parent, to their mother. That is abusive. You're abusing your mother. You're abusing your father. Because before they talk to you, you're cursing them, you're drinking your alcohol. And you're telling them things that you're not supposed to tell them.